we'll start off pretty basic, just judge tell me about yourself, kind of how you'd sum yourself up. So I'm 25 years old. Um, I live in Pennsylvania, USA, uh, in a big city, and uh, I've always been big on gaming. As a kid, the frequent friction between parents and staying up too late and all that classic stuff. Now it's more of an embraced hobby, and as long as you can maintain your responsibilities plus that, I think that's concerned for, for at least my upbringing was that all I do is video games, that's all I got. But um, I'm, a, I'm in a pretty good spot in my life where, you know, I love my work. Uh, I work as a therapist, and um, uh, in my meantime, especially with COVID going on, I've really been doubling down on the VR, VR scene as a, uh, a point to get new experiences and whatnot. There's definitely some up there about VR getting a lot more popular during COVID because I think people are just really starting to realize how much you kind of take for granted that ability to just see something new and not be staring at the same four walls all the time. And I feel like when, when that's the case, you're, it's a lot easier to be immersed in this because you want to be immersed. You're not really putting yeah. it on and trying to be impressed by it. You want it to be good. Yeah. I have a core group of... of... I have a, four, a core group of four friends that I've been friends with since middle school, and we haven't seen each other in a year, but we all have headsets, and that's basically what we do now. It's like three times a week, that's what we're doing. Either we're in here, we're playing some other game together. Um, this is this is what we use, and it's, it's been it's been going really well. It's competing against what our current way of communicating with someone that's not in the room with, and that's just either over a video call or but there's just some about seeing someone in like a three-dimensional space in front of you it's just it's not the same as just like texting someone or sending someone a snapchat yeah I and mean, even even now i'm noticing that um, i'm so used to the space as is that i think once you get past the, the gimmickiness of it then you, you find out more of your natural mannerisms start to enter in and here so even as we're talking i'm making a point to take a break of looking right at you in the eyes and looking around as if you're right here whereas in a, in a regular kind of a two-dimensional sphere my body language is is mirroring almost one-to-one -one as if we were actually together at this point so you were mentioning in the messages that you sent me that you have some physical disabilities and limitations that you use VR to to help yourself with so if you could just tell me a bit about that I have a muscle condition on my left side that um, I have all my strength but my fine motor functions and my fingers aren't there so it's it's very unnoticeable for people and it usually comes down to my closer fan group kind of notice like oh you're playing basketball with one hand or you, you drive one-handed why are you trying to act like you're like low riding or something and it's like oh, I, I physically can't grip the wheel um, so in the VR space uh, I have certain uh, the index controllers which are kind of higher end and that's kind of the background of, of having a hobby like gaming and there's limits to what you have access to in order to compare it to other people um, as far as performance goes so in the VR space I have specific controllers that I can bind everything I need to my right hand and I still have a basic squeeze function on my left hand and of course there's no finger movement here so you're not going to be able to detect that but I can grip just as easily as my right hand that's fine um, and most of the uh, inputs that you need uh, mandatory for both hands is usually a grip all the button stuff I can map to my right it's always nice to have a break um, so that's something that is more exclusive with, with VR it's not that you closed off about talking about it. There's just going to be some kind of monotony telling the same story over and over. In VR, you can just jump in and if you don't say anything, no one's going to even notice anything because people just view people differently. Yeah, and there, there's, there's a certain perk to the perspective that I've always grown up having of always having the view that you don't know what's on the other side of a screen to a person but in life you don't know what's going on in their personal life and um i've always had that context i need to have that context because i'm aware that people are looking at me and assuming things about me that that aren't accurate and um in the vr space that that's just as true as in real life 
just because you see a person. You can go off the height even or whatever, but like even in this format, we don't have legs here. So you might assume somebody this tall is a child. They could just be sitting down because they're tired. It could be a bigger person. I'm a, I'm a bigger dude. I like to take a break every once in a while, but you, you learn to wipe off all those assumptions and just let people let people uh, show you who they are on their own and you learn time after time if you interact with enough people that you don't you don't know anything about anybody since the art offers something that's so appealing to you personally do you think that it's easier for your brain to really accept it as a reality and just immerse yourself because it's something can not touch on what's up before something that you want to work do you think it's a lot easier for you to really get into it Absolutely. I think there's there's a level of requirement. No matter what the experiences we're talking about, there has to be some level of openness in order to take it for what it is. To embrace it and make it my own kind of thing, make it my own experience, is something that comes with the hours putting in, no matter how open I was at the beginning. It still is, it still is like mind-blowing going in, and it's kind of almost disrespectful to the degree in which you get used to it so often technology is moving so quickly that we're just on the next thing but this is one of the few like landmark technology pieces for me that i always take a moment like every once in a while and just holy crap because no matter what there's a need to translate like the awareness of like we talk about like the screen door effect with screens um and it gets better and better and at first, you might be hyper aware of it, but everybody that I've introduced to this forgets about it to the point where you need a designated person around to make sure they don't forget too much and hit something. Or, or as the, you know, the more you get into it, the more you forget, and it's it's a it's a hilarious thing. It usually translates to everybody laughing because a person's screaming or stumbling. Hey, he's biting the tree. Oh, <laughs> oh my god! They are there, and to the outside world, it looks hilarious. I think that just goes to show the the extent that the technology is getting to and people's receptiveness to it. I'm grateful that I'm at an age where I'm used to technology moving like that. And it's easy for me to hop on it and, and take it and again, make it that transition point of making it your own. Does VR make it more difficult dealing with your disabilities in the real world after getting to do these things with your friends where you don't feel as much limitation? Is it something that just doesn't really even affect you? Can you separate the two worlds very easily? It doesn't really affect the outside. I think it might be different if I was introduced to this at a very early age. Um, like I said, I, I'm, I'm 25 at the moment, and I, I was born with this condition. So I don't, I don't think that the four years of having VR really compete with the context that I work under in the outside world. What it does do is it gave me this contrast of, uh, you know, when it comes to my disability, I was, I was a lifeguard before I was up there. That's like my, my summer job was lifeguarding. And my relationship with my disability was, it's like, this doesn't come, this doesn't go, so I might as well get with the program. Just like the first kind of nudge I had to understand it differently was I was at the pool and the kid asked me why my hand was like that because sometimes it, it rests a bit differently. Um, like I'll hold it behind my back to like relax the muscles. And I explained to him that like, but I was like, well, my left hand is basically always angry and it's always in a fist. And he's like, oh, that's cool. And I was like, oh, yeah, yeah that is kind of cool. You know what? Shoot. <laughs> you know, <laughs> like, you know and, and, and it's like little stuff like that where, um, it's such, I'm so aware of it all the time, but having the option to not even have to pick from that list of what layer of disclosure do I give this person to be able to just be like, I'm just gonna go off of nothing. Like there's this new object of nothing. And um, it's not that I pick not saying anything on this list, but it's an option that I didn't even consider before until I had VR. It, it has a, an interesting way of adding some level of empowerment to whenever I pick anything else on that list. Because I usually have this point of uh, advocacy where I'm not going to just pass it off. I like to educate people. Um, but that doesn't mean that's my job 24-7. I, I don't get paid for that one. So I'll just pick, I'll just pick what I want out of it.